All right, I'm going to call to order the uh, meeting of March 17, 2014 of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, I've got a pretty full agenda tonight. Uh, so uh, the first item on the agenda is a review of um, the Brightview as-built uh, design changes up at the um, up at the Sims project. Uh, and um, a little bit of background here. Um, we there had initially been a hearing that was advertised uh, for this evening at seven o'clock. Um, that hearing was scheduled because of a uh, because Brightview had filed an application to reopen the special permit. Um, since that time, the application has been withdrawn uh, because the um, changes that were made do not necessarily require an applicant to reopen the special permit. Um, so that application has been withdrawn and therefore the hearing has been canceled. Now, having said that, we're still going to hear about the design changes of the as-built um, and discuss them among the board um, with respect to any changes that are um, within the special permit. The description is any changes that are not material or substantial um, simply need the board to approve them and move on. Even those that aren't just need written approval. So it's not necessarily the case that we would need to open a special permit regardless. Um, so with that as background, I, I do also want to mention, because it's not a public hearing, it's not opening the special permit, we're going to mm -hmm. review the as-built design changes. So tonight's meeting is not a meeting with respect to the um, neighborhood protection plan or anything else. We're talking about the changes that are being, um, uh, basically, that we're being told about that have uh, taken place up there. So that's what we're going to hear, and that's what we're going to deal with. Uh, we do have one other open item that uh, has been brought to my attention that I think we at least want to understand a little bit more. About, so. Uh, with that, uh, I'll ask the um, Brightview folks to come on up and uh, help walk us through the different changes that you're uh, wanting us to uh, approve. We appreciate the opportunity to come in front of you again. Um, I'm going to have Eric walk through the changes. Eric's our architect. Uh, but I just wanted to say um, that we're, I'd like to apologize that we're having this discussion kind of post uh, activity on the site. Um, some of these changes were necessitated by grading on the site. It does evolve a little bit from engineering to when we finally get a shovel in the ground. Um, <clears throat> we felt most of these were really uh, de minimis changes, but we also, I don't mean to be cavalier in saying that, you have a process here. We would certainly respect that, and we would have come to you earlier if we thought they were material in such a way. So part of it comes from our history and other jurisdictions where this would normally not have uh, required additional discussion, but we also respect your process. And so I just wanted to uh, be contrite and tell you, you know, we apologize for the step we're now having to take. Um, I hope that you deem these changes to be immaterial as well. But let us give you some background as to what the changes, what necessitated the changes, why we took the steps we did, um, and then have maybe some dialogue about things you're more concerned about, and we'll go from there. That'd be great. And if you wouldn't mind just doing an introduction of everybody, that would be that'd be good for the record. Yeah. Well, I'm David Holland with Brightview. I'm a development officer for the organization. Um, Eric Anderson is the architect, you can do your own introduction, but architect with... Eric uh, Anderson, the architect. <laughs> with Pro, Procon um, Architecture. Swings around. Um, uh, you know Josh. Josh Davis, Davis Long. Okay. 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 I think Eric's put all these on a board, so... That'd be great. I, mean, I think you have the things in front of you as well. Does that work? Yeah, So we just blew up what you have in front of you. Uh, what you have in your loan by 17 is your uh, same thing on a larger scale. I'm trying to stay out of my way here. Uh, 
first page is basically just sort of a key plan to show you where all the changes within happen around the building, give you a sense of where they are, whether they're on the street side or the, or the side of the woods or, or what have you. Uh, we just try to lay out the changes in some kind of systematic way so we could uh, easily go through them and explain to you uh, what we've done here. That sounds great. And as a process, why don't we do this? As we flip pages, um, let's, let's pause it before we flip to the next page or, or on each item and make sure that there are no uh, questions. Anyone who has a question or a comment, please uh, mm -hmm. just pipe up. I'll just, I'll just yep. jump in the first, uh, first year. So this, this first, basically it's before and after photo. This is what was uh, issued to use 100% elevations uh, some time ago, and this is what's, this reflects what's there now. Uh, this first change is in the courtyard area. Um, it's these double doors, actually it's a single door with a side light, is the area in question. Uh, I had originally had a patio out in front of this unit. Uh, we try to get the residents outdoors as much as possible, so we try to squeeze patios in where we can. When the final grading was in, uh, I could not get the grades to work for this patio. Uh, there's a sidewalk right out in front of it, and obviously the slopes all need to be ADA. Uh, and I just couldn't make that happen on the site when the, when the grading all shook out. Uh, so basically what we've done is we took a patio out here, and without the patio there's no reason for the door. So this pair of windows is in the same location as these uh, as the door was. So that's that's what that change is all about. Uh, this yeah, change, well, wait a second, why don't we, why don't we ask, does anyone have a question with respect to that? I guess the only question I have is, is the right double doors, so that's still a patio, is that, or is that just a? This still a patio, yeah. Okay. That's an adjacent thing that has a sure. patio. So my question would be, what's become of the patio? Is it lawn, is it plants? It's just landscape area. It's, so it's lawn area? Or is yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a very area? small strip between the, between the walkway around the driveway and the building, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's just landscape space now. Should it be like mulch bed? With the yeah, what specific, wondering. specifically yeah. what plants are there, I couldn't tell you. It's, it's basically a continuation of what's going on around that around the building. There's a, okay. there's a little bit of gravel right next to the building. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's mulch, so I don't think it's lawn there. All right. It would be nice if there were plants. I think there's a rhododendron in it. If I'm remembering walking through the building this afternoon, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely landscape. I don't think it's lawn. I don't think it's any lawn next to the building. It's landscaping. I, I couldn't tell you which bushes in particular are there, but okay. Um, there's lawn and landscape at the building. There's, there's both, I think. Yeah, it's it's very narrow down here, but unfortunately, I don't have a landscape plan. With Your the landscape is not right? Yeah. Okay. Either one is fine, but landscape. Or, a planting area, I think, would be mm -hmm. preferred because there's not much right. in Start the front. Yeah. yeah, I agree. <laughs> and it's in between awesome. planted areas right now. This is the patio. Yeah, it's right here. Just in there's a... Yeah, I see it right here. That, that's the little patio out there? Mm-hmm, and here's the planting plant. Right, so that's, that's out. So I'm not sure what that yeah, bush is next to it. Yeah, so there's planting on both sides. It would be great if that could also be planting. And you're thinking it's really good. That would be very nice. Yeah. Rather than just lawn. Okay. okay. That's okay. Thanks. Okay, anybody else on the item one? Okay, we'll move on to item two, please. Item number two is around the side, just to the right of the garage entrance. Um, the way I originally drawn it, I showed the fence with the pickets vertical down this sloped uh, wall. The fence manufacturers, when they came back to me and submitted the drawings to us, is we, we can't pitch the fence that steeply. None of the fence products can get racked to that degree. It's too steep. Uh, so at that point, we said, okay, well, we'd have to step a wall in so we can put a normal fence on it. Uh, it still functions as a guardrail. It needs to be a minimum 42 inches high above the ground. Just obviously so somebody doesn't fall over it. Uh, not that anybody would be climbing up there anyway. Um, but that change really was necessitated by the, by the fence products. Um, the wall could have been cast either way. It's basically a concrete wall with uh, stone fascia. Uh, but I just couldn't get a fence product that could, be, uh, that could accommodate that slope, essentially. So is there actually more wall or less wall than on the other one? Uh, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's probably less mm -hmm. with it stepped. And your grades work, you're not going to see any soil coming over that wall? No, there's still a little bit of a bump on the other side between the grade and the wall. Still lower? Yeah. Okay, that would be my only concern. Mm. Eric said that 
that's a retaining wall. There's no uh, there's no staircase on the other side of that. Is that no, it's just just the ground is sloped. Okay. Behind it. Yeah. As long as you don't start to get any erosion coming across mm -hmm. it. that could be nasty. That would be over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else in there? Okay. I'm going to dive in through this. Uh, the change, this change is, throughout the process, we try to get as many windows as possible. Usually we, we push for that just to bring more light into the units. Mm -hmm. There are uh, living units behind this wall. And where we have the opportunity to add them as we usually do. Uh, and that, that's the case here. This, this uh, condition exists on both ends of the building. And this was just an opportunity to get another window into one of the assisted living uh, units, the, the living room, basically. Uh, so we, we want to take advantage of that. So we added a window, saw an opportunity, and, and, and added that. So I'm sorry, you did that in two places? So it's mirrored? Yep, or? it's on. Uh, on this end okay and on this end as well okay it's basically a mirror image yep just so everyone understands as you're looking at that the arrows point to the lines mean that's a flat roof in front mm -hmm. yeah right about what have that 12 14 feet of flat roof here yeah as it goes uh, it's more, more like 20, 20. Mm -hmm. so oh, yeah, that right face sits yeah, back yeah, yeah, quite yeah, a yeah. ways yeah. we thought from an elevation standpoint especially from the ground you're not seeing that window um, so, from a visual standpoint, it doesn't necessarily have that presence. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, yeah, we could get a corner window mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. unit, which we thought would be extremely valuable for the residents occupying this park. Yes, I get it. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? This is the it's a picture of the back porch uh, that looks out toward the woods. Uh, this change is change of the the roof material up here. This is basically the same porch, different different sections of it. This was a metal standing seam roof originally. We typically don't do metal standing seam roofs. We try to use that asphalt shingles. Just, we try to make this seem like a home and feel like a home for the residents. Uh, so we typically do asphalt shingle. We had a metal standing seam roof on the front of the building, right above the main entrance, which we still have, a highly visible location. Um, back here, it, it's not really visible, except it's, it's highly visible from these areas of the building looking out. Mm -hmm. And the concern was our residents, we wanted to feel like they were at home, not looking out and seeing a metal roof. Um, it's a, uh, so it's, it's purely material change from the metal seam to asphalt shingle. Any question on that? No? Okay. Uh, also on the same drawing here, uh, I had originally designed this, you can see that the wall of the building beyond has a stone wainscot on it. The wall out in front of the porch used to also be stone. Uh, and as this went into construction, we started to see the space take shape. We realized when you're sitting on the porch, you have these beautiful woods out in front of you, and the whole view is blocked up to 42 inches by a stone wall. So uh, we thought it'd be advantageous to take that stone wall out and add a fence so you could actually see through so you could enjoy the landscaping and the, and the natural uh, uh, treescape beyond. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's what initiated that change. What's the material for the fence? Uh, it's, it's aluminum. It's designed to look like wrought iron, but it's aluminum. Did that wall act as a seat wall at all before? No. It's, is it at the edge of the lawn, or is it at it's the right edge the, of the building? It's at the edge building. of the porch. Yeah, between the porch and part of its patio, part of its lawn. Yeah. So there is a porch, an at-grade porch in that area? There is, yeah. I couldn't tell from where it was on the plan. Can you point to where it is on the plan again? Sure. This is the, this is the porch here. So there's a patio here, and then there's landscaping around. Oh, so the railing area. is all the way over there, not where it says item six? Uh, we're on item five. Uh, yeah, that's that four. Are we on six? Five. Five. Oh, we're on five. Yep. 
Okay. So perhaps. Okay, right. good. Yeah, part of it's screen porch, and it changes to the open porch. Mm -hmm. So it's really just a view. I mean, one of the obviously the site's kind of an odd nut, but um, you have the beautiful view of the trees out there. So everything we're doing, we're trying to take full advantage of that. Sure. Does that porch have seating on it? It does. Yeah. It does. Okay. This is really our prime area, uh, outdoor space for the residents in a communal setting. So there are some uh, individual patios, but this is where uh, folks can congregate on summer evenings and be out in that patio and then onto the porch. Um, we'll talk about the patio in a moment, but um, that how deep is that porch? 12 feet at its deepest, between 8 and 12. So it's really a, a wonderful functioning area. And then on the second floor, just above that, is um, an enclosed porch for uh, dementia mm -hmm. residents, which again is so important that we have outdoor space. So th now that that patio, I know I'm jumping ahead to another item, but now that that patio has been extended out, is that fence at the outer edge now, right? Of the extended it's, it's patio. It's not this fence. It's actually a railing at the porch as well. That's what I. Oh, so it's okay. That's what this change is about. So it's the one that was actually at the porch at the building itself. So that's at the interior area. And then the part that you've added, uh, I forget which item it is. The patio? It's, it's actually item 11, I guess, where it actually shows the added patio. So that's what this is. This is around the added patio. This, this, is, this is not at the added patio. This yeah. is at the porch. At the end. This is at the, at the porch. Yeah. End of the porch. Yeah. Yeah. So then there's another fence at the added patio. Correct. So you're going to have two fences there. Correct. And you need both. Yeah, there's, there's not a big drop here grade-wise off the porch, but any drop for seniors is potentially hazardous, so we try to focus and only have an opening where we have a nice, smooth, ADA-compliant transition. You know, if it was in somebody's house, you wouldn't necessarily need a railing there, but um, yeah. for frail seniors, we try to play it safe. So anyway, that's, that's where that... Uh, Anything else? Okay, so I'll move on to item six. Uh, change on the bottom, item number six is um, there's a the commercial laundry is in here, and what oh. you're seeing is the vent that comes from that commercial laundry from the dryers within that room. Uh, this is basically just an item that I neglected to show in the elevations originally. The commercial laundry has always been there, um, and it obviously always needs to be vented. We put the louver in within the window frame uh, so it wouldn't stand out as something that's asymmetrical or, or uh, some way you know, doesn't fit on the elevation. Uh, but it's really a, a practical um, change. We need to vent those commercial dryers out of the, out of the building. Um, it, I try to avoid shafting these dryers all the way up through a building. Um, you know, lens dryers, even in a house, obviously, is a big source of uh, potential fire hazard. Uh, so we try to vent it directly out of the building wherever possible. So that's, that's what we've done here. The dryers are basically on the other side of that wall. So is this beyond the patio sitting area? It or is, yeah. Something? This is, it is. Down. all the way down at the end. stone wainscot at the base of the building to a vinyl siding and that's in this green area here that you see on the plan. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for this change fundamentally is that as this building started to take shape this area is really not visible um, to just about anywhere unless you're walking uh, behind the building or in front of the trees over here. Uh, so from a practical standpoint, rather than having a change in materials, it's, it's just a uh, simplified, down to a completely maintenance-free, you know, vinyl-sided fixture of the wall. So these, el these particular elevations are just showing you where that used to be. The green hatch is where that, uh, where the other material was. It was a, an Eldorado stone, uh, basically a cementitious uh, stone facade. This area is tough to access. Obviously, it's kind of out at the edge of the hill. 
So we try to simplify that elevation as much as possible for any future issues that might arise. It would cause somebody to have to go back there. So that's what these first two uh, elevations show. These other two show the same thing. There's also a, a patio here, but if there's any questions about the stone, I'd be glad to answer those. Christine, is that what you talked about? The patio? No. Said, no? Okay. No. That was in the back area here. So the stone is more work than the vinyl siding for some reason? It's, well, it's just a change in materials. Um, it's a change in materials that we have to flash. And, uh, mm. uh, it's, it's an area of the building that I don't know where you'd see it. If you walk down the street on the sidewalk on that side of the street, you could look down over the wall and the see it. The lower Vista Park you might see it from. Pardon? From the lower Vista Park you might see it a little bit. From the lowest of right, so, yeah, this time of year, especially if there's no leaves in the trees, you, you see. Yeah, I think it's part mostly it. meadow areas between you will be. yep. that yeah. side of the building and the park. Yeah. There might be some plantings in that area too. But the simpler we can keep the skin, the better in terms of long term maintenance. Obviously, where we need and want a real architectural pop, aesthetic pop, we will do that. Here it just I, it, it didn't warrant it in the end we thought and so if we can preserve the integrity of the skin we want to take that opportunity since there's no visual um, aesthetics to the public or the residents um, but that's you're right the long distance park is up here and then it drops down and then you kind of almost hit this gully where the building comes into that area. Mine. See it. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, lower before and after, uh, Eric, uh, you're not showing the retaining wall going up the slope. Is that just so we can see what the building's going to look like? I mean, you're not changing the topography there. Exactly, yeah. Okay. It's just so you, so you can see this. Uh, okay. the, the next item on here is that uh, the patio basically is relocated from the front to back here. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, we'll see it later, but the retaining wall here, we were able to make that smaller yeah. just because the existing grade worked out. But this is kind of cut so you can see what we did. Okay. Yeah, we, did we didn't change the grade. You see this was the original wall? Yeah. So kind of a bit Yeah, we would love to have added one, uh, but since we lost the one in the front, it's kind of a wash. But uh, the way the grade shaped out here, we had enough flat area to get an ADA accessible patio, and it's, it's really quite nice back here with the uh, mm -hmm. existing trees. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just want to make sure. So on number seven, the, the third one, sorry, the third. Yeah. It looks like, did you add a window there on the right? Looks like it's a double window. It used to be a single on the left. And then on the one on the bottom, did we lose a window there? Yeah, this set here, right? My yeah, yeah, it looks like you've added one there. And then down below, it looks like you lost one. Yeah. yeah. You're right. That was not. This one, this window was not doable because that became a. Uh, I'm trying to get this a mechanical room. I believe it's a, the mechanical room back behind there. Okay. Uh, as far as the upper elevation, yeah, this. These changed. I think this was a single. It's showing like a door here, but I think that was a single window that we're able to make a double, which would be the standard in these units. Usually we try to make a double window at least, if yep. not a triple. Mm -hmm. um, but the grade here, the way the grade worked out, we were able to get two. Okay. But you're right, that's not called out as a, as a change here. Okay, and then, and then the other thing, and maybe this is what was asked before, I know you're just showing the stub on the right, but you've kept the stonework on the top of that wall on the grade? Here? Yeah, no, like, because we're only seeing the stub, right? Because you wanted to show us what changed, I think. You yeah, we just cut through the hill here so you can see it. Right? right, but I mean, you see how there's a 
It looks like there's a stone wall coming down. Stone on the, on the, on the left hand on side. On the left hand side. Here, yeah, yeah, that's, keep yeah. That down. Yeah, does that still exist? That's slanted. Oh, this here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh no. No, I think that was intended to be uh, yeah, actually it was intended to be on the wall. This this wall shrank back um, significantly. I think on that side there's really no visible wall, it's just slightly above grade. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. So you didn't end up having I think on the other side, I don't think on the back side we have stone either. Uh, are those walls shown on this site plan? Yes, yeah, that. So there's that one. There's this one. So it's on page on page five. You can see. It. You can see it on page. Five. Yeah. There's one it's angled one. And one. It's the it's yellow, right? right. One's the, yeah, that one. Okay, and originally it was. Oh, and then bit. it came. Okay, I see. I see. Originally it was a little bit. Yeah, where does yeah. this lower one meet? So it got a lot shorter. Yeah, it got a lot shorter, and it kind of cuts out. Now. Oh, it would be. Yeah, because yeah, four. Jots out a little. Yeah, this bit one further. stayed about the same, although it's kind of bigger. Yeah. The windows on the elevation above there. Yeah, okay, and, and I see your retaining wall section. That's right, okay. extension. Oh, that's right. right, right. Yeah. So we would have to... Yeah. Okay, so that's where we got to come in out. Yeah. That's the one that we cut through, too. Make the elevation we could. Is that stone? Uh, no, it's one side facing the public is essentially below grade, except for a slight amount of curb. And the back side is facing the building, and it's, uh, I believe it's just concrete, just cast, cast in place concrete. And it's ready rock. Okay. The small one, I believe, is concrete. The far, one farther up, the larger one is. Uh, mm -hmm. The one you can see is ready rock. Yeah. Okay, anything else on that? Okay. So the changes on the site plan, this this area here is where we removed that patio. And the grades, the way the final grades shook out, they did not match exactly the drawings. Slight differences, but it makes a big difference when you're trying to get anything to work out from an accessibility perspective. So the handicapped parking shifted from this side of the circle to this side because we get ADA access here. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see there's a total number of parking spaces out here uh, is the same, but they are shifted around based on the way the grade shook out. We had a spot here on the end that kind of stuck out into the drive aisle. Uh, that was rotated around to be parallel here. Um, obviously, this needs to come a fire truck, and just to have that parking space with, with its nose sticking out in the drive aisle uh, was not ideal. And we were able to relocate that up to this location. You want to just go through one at a time, Mike? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. So the parking, probably the biggest change out here would be the, would be the parking, which okay. we shifted things around. Not a, from bright use perspective, didn't make a whole lot of difference uh, from a usability standpoint. So this is stuff that we had to do, the design team had to do, um, just to make the grades work out from an accessibility perspective. And uh, a little bit of an issue with that parking space sticking out in the drive aisle, so we rotated that. Uh, the other parking change out here is one of, the, one of the spots shifted down. There was one parking space here in the original plan. Uh, now there's two. This one of the spaces from here moved down to there. So then there is an increase in spaces because when you count the top, it's the same as it was. Yeah, we're down. Correct. Yeah, we're down in the garage because there's a generator down there that took up an extra space. Uh, okay. So the spot one spot moved outside. Wasn't that spot for a bus stop before? Yeah, it is. It is still. Is there one of those? It's in the van. Yeah. That's correct. So you have two spaces there. One now it's two. Right. So there is a net. You're saying no net gain. There is a net gain of one. But you're taking it yeah. out of the garage. So there's correct. No net yeah. Gain. Outside there is a net gain of one. Yeah. But overall, there's a net loss of one. Oh, one. Just right. yeah. So we gain there's a net loss of one. Where? It's overall, when you include the garage, in the garage with the okay. site, yeah, the the overall parking for the entire project, we're actually down one from yeah. approval. We lost two inside the yeah. garage. We gained one outside. Why did you lose two inside? Because the, the generator, the generator, the generator oh, sorry, fuel tank being larger, uh, is huge. So it uh, it took up a couple spaces inside. The so, so oh, I'm sorry, you're done. Okay. 
So the amount of parking that you have in front of the building, it's all necessary by permit. That's what we permitted. Is it necessary for your usability also? We do. To have that parking? Uh, uh, in front of the, yeah. of the building? Ideally it is because, wow, staff will be utilizing the garage and some family members will come into the garage as well. They really prefer to drop off their family member at the front door if that person has mobility to come in and out, just like they come in and out of the front, the front door of their house. Um, and we need enough space in that area to allow guests to come in and just easier to navigate. Is that guest parking then in the front? It can be a combination of uses. It could be a resident space, although really, frankly, residents are not driving in this community, but there may be one or two. Um, and then it is for guests or visitors who come in or prospective residents and their family members who are coming in. Mm. So our, our preference, frankly, in most of our communities is to have more surface parking near the front door. Yeah. But obviously the site has significant limitations. I have to say this is the one change that I was not happy with. Okay. It's, it's not very pleasant. It's very awkward the way the parking is now. There's a lot less green space at the entrance. Mm -hmm. When you come in, so it, now it's going to look, there's nothing to buffer or soften the wall, and that wall is already not as attractive as I had hoped it would be, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it I'll turned out the, to be the big block ready Sims rock. Road. No, the wall up no. around your new oh, curved yeah. parking space, yeah. so now you have that parking space right up against the wall. It took out mm -hmm. five crab apples, it looks like, five trees, substantial trees that were in there, some mm -hmm. green space that was in there. There's seven on the plant list, but there were only five there, it looked like. It, it, the two are lost on the other side of the parking lot. Oh, they're lost there also? It appears, though. I, I, I don't think we have a... We don't um, have a new planting plant. Plan. It does appear, you're right, that those two are also lost. So all the parking now is extremely crammed in there. There's much less, I don't know if square footage-wise, but the feel of it, when you're looking at it on the plan at the main entrance, there's a lot less right at the entrance. You know, there's a little bit gained where you shifted the one parking space mm -hmm. that had the nose out. Mm -hmm. But compared to the original plan, right. it's, it's substantially different, unfortunately, right. to because, the negative. Because you have, you have that added parking space, but you've also got the two spaces that were just regular spaces as you're coming into the circle. Yeah. The ones on the right are now handicapped. And it's much bigger. And so they're much bigger. And mm -hmm. the walkway now is is completely behind parking rather than some of it being on the sidewalk. I want to know why it was necessitated, actually. That was my big question. Mm -hmm. You know, just saying that it was grades from what was on the drawing and what was there. It looks like the whole wall moved in towards the site considerably, the hospital where at least based on the drawing. The wall, the, the wall product is battered, if you know what I mean. It, it That's sets, why it got so much it thicker. It sets back slightly as it goes up. I think that might be where the... Where Even the, the face of it on the sidewalk side of the street, it seems like it moved into the site more to, to make the site a little bit tighter. Right, yeah, there's, the one positive, I guess, is there's more green space along the top. Along the top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see kind of the thickness here. I mean, the wall obviously isn't that thick. It's, it's just representing that the wall is set back slightly a little bit. This, uh, this condition here was the most challenging of the site. It's just so tight in there to get a retaining wall product in there to hold back the street, the road, and the significance and the grade change here uh, was challenging. Is that all built now? Par the parking and the turnaround and the landscape is in yeah. and everything? Not all the landscaping, landscaping is in because of the weather season. But the parking, the paving, the curb, everything yes. is in. Correct. To answer part of your question, Christine, when Eric's team was working on that retaining wall. Part of what was driving it was a tremendous amount of ledge stone that we encountered under Sims Road and the utility duct bank that was installed as part of the 360 project, which is pretty substantial. So once Procon had opened all of that up, then it was having to redesign that wall and find something that would withstand those conditions. And, and so the, the block wall that you see out there was the end result of trying to minimize the intrusion on our site while working, while retaining all of that stuff on under Sims Road. And the batter that Eric talks about is, was trying to create a wall that would stand as vertical as it could, mm -hmm. given the loads on it. Um, but it's, 
drilled and pinned into the bedrock below Sims Road. It's a pretty substantial project, but the end result of it was um, lost. Yeah, we lost a few feet. And so the shift, when I had Kachi go back through and do the study, the some of the shift of green space is now between the back of the sidewalk at Sims Road and the top of the retaining wall, where, as you observe, you lose a little bit of it down on our site, um, but there is a net gain of what's happening between the sidewalk and the back of the retaining wall as you go up the sidewalk along Sims Road. Okay. When the board is finished, I'd like to ask a question or two. That's good. Yeah. Go um, I just want to ask if you have any idea uh, about the quantity of um, impact to trees um, and, and also the snow storage. It appears as though you lost your snow storage and seven crab apples, four five viranum, two pin oaks, and three honey locusts. But that's just me looking at the comparison. I don't know if that's been done. Caught you a chance to yeah, she she did, and and I didn't get a chance to share that with you. But I, I'll forward that to you tomorrow. There, she do, did. Do you have any recollection? I think that's important for the it, board. Overall, know. it was favorable for from her view, the, the changes that were made, and she went through and did counts of each different species and how many more were there now and less of one and more of another, and just the overall net impact, she, her conclusion was it was, it was immaterial. Um, She's aware so that a net loss in landscaping was not going to be acceptable, yeah. so she, she's reallocating things, not just taking things out. Where do you suppose she put those seven trees? I have to ask her. That's, that's pretty substantial change from yeah, the entry. All, all, all I can offer, Christine, is I can just forward to you tomorrow the summary she did the end of last week and, and let you take a look at it and if there's a need to do something different. Or Does she have a revised landscape plan we could see? Uh, or do you have photos of the site possibly? She did, a, she did an, a, an overview comparison of the final plan to the approved plan. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the answer to that. If she actually updated her plan, I'm not yeah. sure. We can. It'd be nice to see if the if the new planting or the relocated planting is relocated within this front area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. Yeah. If it's not and it's somewhere else, yeah. it's not as effective. Yeah. I know it would right give us like the like number of trees, jungle. but yeah. on the plan yeah. it looks like a concrete jungle. I don't know what it looks like out there. I haven't been out there recently to yeah, see it's finished. Yeah, it's not in yet. The, because of the frozen The plants soil. aren't in, but yeah. the paving is all in. Yeah. It, it feels like it's going to, you know, look like a Sears and Roebuck against the edge of the building with a retaining wall and parking and rather than a nice entrance to your building. So it's... Can I, can I just interject something? Because we were sure. very involved in trying to coordinate this. First of all, that was an extremely technically difficult situation from a structural perspective with the duct bank, how you pin in a retaining wall that has a mesh that go under, under the grade and then pins into the, and it holds itself together. And, and a major utility corridor um, on the shoulder of the road. Um, I just want to attest that there was every effort made during the construction process to get that wall as far in as possible. And I just wanted to emphasize that I don't think it's humanly possible to build that wall any differently than was done. Mm. Um, and also, um, from a public accessibility perspective and, and a visibility perspective, I think that the, where the green space is along the edge of the road is actually much more from a public's perspective, um, you know, visually you know, kind of available to see and to, and to, and to, sit and to uh, potentially screened. So um, I, I, I'm not as involved in the final um, landscaping plan, but I just wanted to sort of emphasize that there was a big effort that went, went into that, a lot of coordination, a lot of can we move the duck bank over? Can we move the road over onto the other side? And, and um, it, was a, it was a long struggle. Um, I just want to see if there's any solutions to adding green back into this area and softening that wall again, which is what those trees were really doing sure. in that area. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. afford to lose a parking space there, the one that's in there, that's yeah, squeezed that, in that there now, right. if that could come back out. Um, if some of the parking can become green parking rather than paved parking. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would work for your clientele, maybe not. Well, you're accomplishing with that more or, or less impervious surface, um, but you, I think what I'm hearing from you is you'd prefer to have more vertical landscape buffering. Uh, well, that would be ideal, and maybe yeah. there's a solution to screen some of that wall with, you know, a different yeah. solution, whether vines 
Oh, you know, Larissa talked about quality. vines on the upper wall. On the wall. There's also maybe air adding vines. Quality and cooling so. no. benefits from having trees. So Definitely. Sure. That's a uh, my you know informal calculus on the number of trees. It seems like a lot. Yeah. To lose. I, yeah, I agree. We want to get you the summary, and we yeah. will. Um, yeah. But I, I do feel confident that we've actually added to the landscaping of the plan, given our sensitive knowing the sensitivity of this issue. I. I I bet we have not been able to add or keep the same in this courtyard just because of the constraints of it. But we've made sure that we've increased it on the site in, in, in whole. So I was just looking for the email that Katya put together. Yeah. I haven't been successful yet, but if I find it here in the next <coughs> few minutes, maybe I can share some of the dialogue. Um, Bruce? It's sort of related to Christine's line of questioning. Um, on going up Sims Road, there's the sidewalk on the uh, southerly side of, of Sims Road, and then um, where the wall is, and that this be the width between the edge of the sidewalk and the wall. Can you tell us what what that width is? How much green area for green space that we, you would have there? Uh, up in here. Yeah, all the way down along the wall as you go towards the entrance. It's increased all the way down on the street side. Uh, it was several feet. I, I couldn't get an exact number. Um, I think before it was four or five, and it looks like it's doubled. Yeah, yeah it's, in width. It's, it's a good four feet. How wide is the wall. sidewalk up there? Five feet. I believe it's five. Yeah. So it looks like before it was probably five, and now it's yeah. possibly maybe not doubled that, but it's. Was that the side that the honey locusts were on? Yeah. 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 So, why are we losing some up there? You're not losing. You're adding. We're gaining there. The, the wall moved there. in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that which is which is a good point. That's yeah. nice for the public. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I agree. That's a that's a positive. It's just detracts the. It seems like your entrance, which was always very tight to begin mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. and very paved. Mm -hmm. You know, you did a nice job on the landscape plan before. Now you've lost a lot of that effect. Mm -hmm. You know, for your own. Do we have guests park inside the garage? You said that sometimes they could. They could, yeah. And that, what's the allocation inside? How does it work? And um, so if we designated spots inside the garage, I don't think we mm -hmm. try to do that. Maybe up near the elevator. Um, well, there's a couple of accessible spots mm -hmm. near the elevator, and, and yeah. But beyond, beyond that, it usually develops as the community matures. And could you stand to lose a spot out there? Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't have a, a short answer for you yeah. on that, and I probably should not be the one to pass judgment on it. Our operations team is fairly detailed about the importance of it. Clearly, we'd prefer to have more than we have today, yeah. so I, I'd be hesitant to say. But I do think you're hearing reluctance on mm -hmm. that one spot that's jammed up there instead of green space. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. It, you yeah. know, and well, we don't have anything in front of us. We don't have pictures. We don't mm -hmm. have, you know, maybe, maybe if you were to show us pictures, we'd be less inclined. But yeah. just in yeah. looking at, if there's it, an opportunity to, to, to put some planting in there, then maybe we're okay. But yeah, it looks like it's jammed. I mean, it looks mm -hmm. like you know it's going to be hard pressed up against a wall. <laughs> the person on the passenger side isn't going to mm -hmm. be able to get out of the car. Uh, essentially, one would think. Uh, and you know, it's just it, so that that one isn't. Let's look into it. Yeah, that one. Yeah, let's get the as-built landscape. Mm -hmm. well, it's not as-built yet, I know, but the mm -hmm. proposed changes to the landscape. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we'll Patrick can, can think about vines on the wall, mm -hmm. possibly something that's not invasive, something that has mm -hmm. as much four-season interest as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know there were thoughts of doing that on the upper, yeah. the upper wall also because it's so stark, yeah. the one that goes up. You know, around the upper Vista Park is very stark. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And even if there's any consideration of doing some type of green paving on at least that space, okay. If that's a possibility, if that's you know kind of a a space that can handle that, I know the handicapped spaces, mm -hmm. you know, Obviously the accessible can't, spaces yeah. can't. But maybe that space in particular. Replace the asphalt with a pervious material. Um, not just pervious, but a lawn type material, mm -hmm. reinforced lawn. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a lot of products out there. I don't mm -hmm. know which one would 
be best for your clients. There's the there's the rings, yeah. you know, the grass pave, there's yeah. concrete mm -hmm. things, there's a combination, you could do a combination of pavers lawn, something to soften it up a bit maybe. Okay. That, that dovetail, dovetails right into the next subject actually. The uh, the concrete the walkway. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then the, the walkway. The um I wasn't sure if um you commented on the snow storage. Mm. Will you still have snow storage on on site? We do have snow storage on site. Um, I, I can't tell you what the square footage of that snow storage area is, but we do. So it's not, it appears like it's no longer in the location that was marked on the 50%? I believe it was moved. Okay. But I don't know how it compares. I'd, I'd have to check on that tomorrow. Where is it now? Right oh. It's in that whole area where that parking space was. Okay. Yeah, I'm afraid that they might use the center area now for snow storage, which yeah. would be another real shame. Christine Cutchett said it, it, it. She said that green strip now ranges from seven to ten feet. It was five feet. Up at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, running along the road between the retaining wall and the sidewalk, yeah. yeah. which is nice. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, and that center walkway. What kind of trip hazard were you trying to eliminate? It didn't appear to have a trip hazard you know, on the original plan. The, we've had, you know, we, in, this, in this senior environment, every, even the slightest, even the rubber transition strips that we specify are constantly scrutinized because if you're moving with very little strength and velocity with a walker, even the slightest bump is a problem. And the concern here was, although we, we like that from a design perspective, I like it, mm -hmm. you have somebody getting out of a car and walking around in the building from concrete to asphalt, from asphalt to concrete, and they just tend to settle slightly different. Um, and the concern was that even a half inch difference in height on the vertical, not only does it become an ADA issue, uh, but it's, it's just a tripping hazard. But now, okay, you're going to need that explained a little more fully mm -hmm. because before you had a very nice wide fan area of <laughs> concrete where people could get out on either side of concrete and walk onto concrete, there was no change in material. Now you have a very narrow strip, which is, is it just painted? A it's crosswalk just, it's, painted? It's not a change in material, exactly. It's painted, but you're going from bituminous to a concrete walk. And what are the, what's the dark shaded narrow band? Are those detectable warnings? No, no up, up near the building? On the Here. entry? Yeah, those, those, those are tactile warning? warning strips. Yeah. So you have tactile warning strips back in? Because yep. before they weren't necessary. So now you have them again. Yeah, we're, like. we're required to have those. So they are code consultant pointing out to us. Mm, Katya had convinced us that it wasn't required, <laughs> actually, mm -hmm. during the design process, because we had asked specifically, I, I had asked specifically mm -hmm. about that, and she actually emailed me the legislation in 2010, it was dropped. It's, it's only required at, and she was right, it's only required at mm -hmm. um, train stations along the edge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's at, everywhere else it's optional. Mm -hmm. So you may want to consider I brought it well, up we, thinking we, it was mandatory, yeah, we, but we it's not anymore. Check it. Eric runs his designs through Debbie Ryan, an yeah. accessibility consultant, and she when she reviews the building as well as the site, and her feedback was that they were required. That's how they ended up. They're finding that those things are actually so. more yeah. of a hindrance than happy. they are a help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so if you can not have it, it might be to your mm -hmm. client's is it, benefit. Is it flush, the paving? Yeah. So there's no curve there? No, it's, it's, it's a flush transition. So you slope up, and then there's a whole zone of... Flush. It's a flush uh, sidewalk condition, yeah. but not all the way around. Just now, as, as you get away from here, it starts to come back up. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't really see how that helps you with the change of materials. Now you have a change of material, whereas before you had concrete on concrete. Yeah, the, the, the issue with the fan sheet concrete was that when the when their van stops here or somebody comes up in a car, anybody gets down on the uh, driver's side and has to walk around the vehicle, there's the potential to get on and off asphalt to concrete. When we have a, in, I don't know what I'll say, a normal site that has a little more room out front, uh, usually there's a very large swath of concrete, um, mm -hmm. not stamped or anything. We don't even do stamped concrete because that is too much of a, an elevation change. We, we like to do that at entrances. We tried to do that here even though we had limited space. That's how Katia originally designed it. Um, but the concern um, operationally was that people, if anybody had to get out of the car and walk around it, they might have to get onto asphalt from asphalt to concrete at that point. When you're walking up to a sidewalk, going up a you know, tackle warning strip or going up a curb cut, that kind of thing, I think you anticipate that. When you're getting out of a car, you're not necessarily anticipating that. So just it was 
purely because it was uh, because there was potential for a tripping hazard. Did I you think, consider making it larger rather than small? Yeah, rather than eliminating? we would like to. It just it, it just got huge. Um, we have we have uh, pervious pavement around here. Mm -hmm. I think that was part of the original approval, if I remember correctly. And as as the concrete comes out. I mean, it, w is it feasible? Yeah, I, I think it would be feasible, but at the end of the day, it was decided let's try to keep everything the same material out there so there's no chance of a tripping issue. Shelter would have liked it better the way we had it originally. Mm, I like it better too. <laughs> um, so the narrow strip that goes from the door to the, uh, the center, the center that's what? Uh, You're asking what material that yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. It's asphalt. It's asphalt. Yeah. It's asphalt. It's asphalt. It's so it would be painted. Yeah. It's a cross it's just painted. Okay. 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 Yeah. One thing, Christine, we, we've actually experienced on, on other properties since we started developing here in New England, mm -hmm. Rhode Island, Danvers, where we've had these different materials meeting. We get differential freeze sure. and thaw and I, I was really the one vocalizing to Eric, we really don't like it. We haven't had good experience with it. And the one thing with keeping it all asphalt, it all performs uniformly. And you know, down at Brayview Commons in Rhode Island, at, every year we have to deal with, you know, sidewalks and curbs that lift as much as an inch and a half, two inches in the winter months, and then go back down. And it's very difficult to, to avoid those tripping hazards. So really the push was just to keep it all asphalt and deal with safety more than aesthetics became the driver. Yeah. I feel like visually you lost a safety zone almost that people may have felt comfortable in when they got in and out of cars. Now that's not there anymore because it's just going to be blocked up. If it had been made like a colored bituminous, you know, an interval color or something mm -hmm. that could have at least designated that zone somehow. Yeah, you need to talk about it. It's hard to get a like small piece of that. You paint the crosswalk sometimes to make it look like brick or something. And the thought was it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear out. Yeah, and there's stuff saving. called street print that, mm -hmm. that wears, but there's imprint that doesn't wear out. The people are using in crosswalks now that also has an interval color. It's a resin material that's Within mixed in. It's, it's, a, it's not actually asphalt. It's a resin that it sits down just like three-eighths of an inch into the asphalt. Mm -hmm. And it, you, it's flush with the surrounding mm -hmm. asphalt. They use it at crosswalks for that express reason so that it doesn't wear out. Yeah, it's an expensive material, but it could have accomplished that. Yeah, I th I, and we agree with you. It's nice. And then we always, we typically do that on a normal site. We try to give yeah. somebody, you get a sense of arrival, I think, mm -hmm. when you transition yeah. onto a different material or if it's the case maybe. But because of the radial nature of the entrance, yeah. it became a little difficult. The imprint is something you could consider. You could look into it. Um, it can be done after the fact. Because what they do is they just mill out a section of the of the bituminous, and it's a very narrow mm -hmm. um, section. You could even just key it in along the edges and have it have a slight bow up, mm -hmm. you know, a concave, okay. convex. It would be a convex. I'm and making a note to a follow. A pillowed up. type of effect Christine. coming up. I'm mm -hmm. just making a note to follow up again. It's called imprint. It's called imprint, yeah. Rather than the street print, which is the slurry that they paint on. Mm -hmm. Both of them are a product that can be stamped also, but you don't have to stamp mm -hmm. it. Um, you can stamp it with different patterns and mm -hmm. brush sand into the stamped area so it actually looks like a mortar joint. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, a nice, it's a nice material and it okay. seems to have held up well over the years. I use it on a lot of bike paths now. So you think it's something that, that would mimic that uh, original fan design? Yeah, and you can. there's a wide variety of color choices so you can pick okay. a color that would work out well for you. Might right. be something to that. Yeah. Okay. You can actually do it after the fact through infrared where they actually melt the Exactly, yeah. yeah. You could just key yeah, in the right. edges and infrared the center and put it down. It's a hot material, I think, when it goes down, the resin material. They use a 350,000 BTU heater. It's yeah. in, in sections and then rework the asphalt. But you can do everything in place. Okay. And more on the uh, circle, because um, maybe we can move down to the uh, bottom. Patio fence and outdoor equipment. Is that now? Yeah. Down at the very bottom? Here it is, yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the patio, uh, the little outdoor, um, here we call it, little uh, 
provides an opportunity to sit out beyond the porch, out in the, the sun or the shade mm -hmm. of, the, of the woods back here. And it's the one place where you really enjoy the outdoors. So the yellow area is patio, the rest is lawn? Correct. And now th that's why I was asking about the double fence. Is there a fence at the heavy line also? Yeah, there's a fence There's a fence right here. This is right at the edge of, that the, one. of the hill. Drops. And then there's another one inside of that. Yeah, that's there the is, one. That there are two fences. Mm -hmm. That's what we just talked about. And you need both of those. Okay. Just for the grade change, yeah. And this, this obviously is a very significant grade change here. It's, here it's very okay. slight, but uh, for the seniors who need something, just it's just a visual barrier as much as anything else. Mm. So is it a step down from uh, the existing yeah. porch? The, the, way the, porch or the way the patio concrete is placed, it's, it's similar to the front. Actually, it's sloped up for a flush transition at the porch okay. for, for an ADA compliant um, egress there. Can people sit all the way around on the patio? Not behind it, just, just in what's shaded. No, the, uh, the other one, the one that's closer in. Here? Yeah. Um, all the way around. Yeah, all the way. That's no, the screen ends, porch, it, right? It, it, this says ballasted roof right here. It, it ends here. So it just becomes a roof. Correct. Over the garage. The garage is below there. Yeah. But the area where you have your new fence, that's a screened in porch? Correct. Here? Right against the, the building? There. This yeah. is a screen and porch, yeah. And the rest of it's just open. an open patio. The rest open, yeah. Yeah, that's that's for the original uh, submitted drawings. So we got both environments. Do we have any elevations of the new pa uh, patio area? Uh, to sh to show the uh, yeah, what the fence. Looks like. Yeah. Um, that's kind of it, what this was, right? Item five. Is that? That, that's kind that's where a, that's taken. Yeah, I don't I don't have an elevation of the. Um, this the is of the fence at the building, uh, and then there's okay. another. So the patio comes out. From there. If I'm reading this right, the patio pretty much comes out from this area, right? Right. From there yeah, out to about here. That's your walk off area. So this is all patio. So this is where. That's right. But the only thing we'd be picking up this on an elevation would be the fence, oh, then, right? Pretty yeah. measured. So otherwise, it's okay. Yeah, this is the flush area then, right? That it's ramping up just slightly, so you don't need the fence. Yeah, it's flush right yeah, exactly. And then yeah, everywhere else is a little bit of a change in grade. So it's down about eight inches, yeah. Okay. It's too much The garage is below that. Yeah. Does the at grade patio go all the way to the corner? There. Yep. These are the these are the resident. Two there's uh, two units in here that have resident patios. Okay. That's, the, that's actually the outline of the garage. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You talked about this retaining wall earlier, Mike, and yeah. the elevation. Yeah. But that's that's what we were talking about. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. You see the old one used to be longer, but the grades last right. the whole time. <laughs> and that's not visible from the outside. That's right. So you're looking at the wall from this side, yeah. Right. That's right around here, more or less. That picture was taken from Summer Street, so it's very visible mm -hmm. from the road. What is it? It's the exhaust uh, from the uh, generator that's in the garage. 
So there's a generator on site here. Uh, obviously, keeps the building line when the power goes out. The generator was placed in the garage. Um, obviously, the generator is very unsightly, so it's hidden in the garage. The fuel tank is also located in the garage. Um, the intake air uh, is in an area where it's basically flush to the ground, so that's not visible. The one thing we couldn't make invisible was the exhaust, uh, which needs to be a certain distance from the building, a certain distance from the intake, a certain distance above the ground. It looks worse now than it will be because the ground is dug around away from it. When the final grade is laid out, it's much shorter than it looks. It's also scheduled to be painted the same color as uh, the beige color of the building behind it. Um, as well as to be landscaped to hide it as much. Yeah, as can possible. you show me where it is on the landscape? Maybe? Because maybe it'll be hidden by the landscape quite a bit. So is it on the it's not actually on the slope, is it? The slope that's gonna be No, it's on it's up above. Right. Actually it looks like it's on the slope a little bit. Yes, it's it's hard to tell you this is all dug out around it as part of the installation. Mm. When the grade levels out, it'll be uh, so not, it's on the riprap. It's on the riprap slope that's yeah. being covered with a seed mulch mix. Yeah. Right it's, now it's just been yeah, mulched. Yeah, it's just right over the, the edge. The slope. Right on the top of the slope. So, so it'll be in front of the trees, possibly, rather than... You won't see it from your building, but you may see it from looking up this way. Yeah, I think it's what got this plan is, is, is to plant around it. Um, it's right around the edge there. Flat and slow, but the plan is to plant around it, paint it to match the building behind it, the beige color. As you're driving up the street, mm -hmm. Summer Street, it from almost every angle it has that beige color behind it. So the mm -hmm. thought was to paint that color so it matches a little better. Well, if we're going to plant around it, maybe it'd be good to know what we're planting mm -hmm. and how big it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And it may be that painting it beige is the worst color. You may want to paint it dark mm -hmm. green or. Mm -hmm. that was other option. If there's going to be evergreens, yeah. you know, <coughs> whether she's putting rhododendrons or that might be helpful to know what she's putting there mm -hmm. and how tall this is. Yeah, that, that would be very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure you need it there. Right? There's no question about you needing it. It's just how to no, camouflage it. Shielding. Yeah. That's great. So we'll make sure that's included when Katya issues. Yeah, that would right. be good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kristen, where is it? It looks like it's about, it's about here at the top of the slope somewhere. Okay. But based on this, it looks like it might be a little down on the slope, because this is mm -hmm. the mulch yeah, that we're grabbing. Right but if it's dug around, oh, it might, just, right it might be an optical illusion, though, right? Yeah, yeah, because if it's dug around, it's a little lower than it is. Either way, it's kind of in it's front of the trees, if there's trees It's there. unfortunately got some light to it. It's, it's yeah. not as dramatic as this is portrayed right now, but it's got some height to it. What's it got, like a thing on the end? It's like a It's got a, I don't know why, it's got a candy cane shape to it. The height is by code. I think it's just a weather cap, because I understand uh -huh. the height. The height is by code, it needs to be a certain height. Unfortunately, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a certain distance away from the building. And Okay. Well, there's, you know, there's things that can hide it. <laughs> We've got a whole range of what, evergreen that's planting. That's what we want to see is exactly what is going on. You know, we're already having these large evergreens here. These are white pines, it looks like, if, if the plan has stayed the same. These are much narrower, upright, almost cedar-like. So it could be just wrapping those around mm -hmm. it more, if, if we can do that on that area. So yeah, Tetra will come up with something, I'm sure. Distance, distance needs to be, the plants need to be away from it, combustible, so that kind of We'll, sure. We'll get a definitive answer. I mean, maybe just putting them around the back of it, <coughs> letting it shoot out, and making it the same color as the plant. The plant's behind it. Mm -hmm. yeah. that might be enough. Maybe she can tell us how much of it will be exposed after the regrading is finished. The, the finished yeah. grade is yeah. that Documents used as the keeper. Yeah, here you go. Is it the same photo? No, they look like two different ones. No, they're the same photo, one I just did differently. Oh, okay, they are. Okay, thanks. I yeah. was, you know, stopped the car on the side of Summer Street and. That was from Summer Street. That was taking it. With a zoom. Yeah, well, I took it with the zoom, but it's, it was taking it from Summer Street and it's clearly visible from the road. Um, just to let you folks know how visible it was. Yep. 
before moving on to the sign then, let's recap some of the site plan um, requests that I guess you're hearing from us. Number one is this, the landscape plan is going to be very important for us to understand, um, specifically around the um, exhaust pipe and the courtyard, mm -hmm. um, and to understand what that in the end is going to look like. Um, does anyone have any other comments with, or requests with respect to the building itself? All the different changes, one through seven. what have you, one through seven. Now. I didn't hear any, so I'm not I'm not giving any homework with respect to those. Yeah, those are fine. Okay. Um, Carol, anything else on? Not regarding the building. Okay, great. Um, okay, and then. Once again, it's not a public hearing, so um, we're not in, in process for that right now. Um, okay, and then let's move on to um, the signs, I think. Let's move on to that now. Before we do the like, yeah, okay, maybe it's, I'm sorry, keep going. It, maybe it's, it's part and parcel of the landscape plan, but um, are we asking the developer to come back with any rethinking of the um, yes. Or the courtyard area. Yes. The parking, yeah. the walkway. We're, we're going to look at the the options <coughs> for landscaping, and maybe Kachi has already done that. Yep. And we'll explain that to you if that is sufficient. We prefer to keep the parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we can't, um, then we'll talk to you about uh, possibly looking at removing the parallel space. And options for the parking. Softening the parking. So, so, or, yeah, so, right. uh, the other option is softening the parking with. Uh, and impervious and vines service. on the walls, possibly things like that, to mm -hmm. bring yeah. some of that back, possibly. Mm -hmm. And maybe the imprint idea for the, uh, right. for the entrance, uh, entrance, entrance, entrance area. area. Yeah, I've got that. Down there as well. And Carol, uh, I, I also recall, and um, don't mind putting a fine point on it, that the board um, had asked that the um, Honey locusts, it's not all be honey locusts, but there is some mix of other varieties. We did cave on that eventually, but. <laughs> that um, I don't know if we want on that anymore. Yeah, I don't think so, but. but oh, is that what? No, 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 yeah. Oh, no, it went, to, it, went to, it went to honey locusts. Oh, it did? Okay. I, I think it yeah, did. It did. I think we lost yeah. on that. Yeah. We asked them to reconsider, but it doesn't. Really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do think you're hearing quite a bit of reluctance on that parking mm -hmm. spot. I'm not even and snow storage. Yeah, like wanting to, to understand where it is. Yeah, I've got that precise location. And the accounting of where the plantings went. That's part of that's the That's part of the yeah. Bruce, anything else? No. no okay, thank you for, for clarifying. That's a good question. Okay. Moving on to signage. Give you a sense of where we are from here. It's just right, right at the main entrance of the building. Right at the main entrance of the building. Uh, actually, to our main entrance to the site. The area where the sign is is just adjacent to the entry drive here as you're going in, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, this is the sign shown right here. Uh, like the rest of the site, it's a tight little spot. There's a street light there, there's a sign, and there are things going on. This grade. To get up to the existing street, um, this walkway, our walkway off our side is technically a ramp uh, per code. Um, it's a 1 to 12 slope, so it requires uh, handrails. So that's what you see here. And this is the signage that we're talking about here that, uh, that has changed. And we have a, a couple of good photos to show you. Um, are there any questions about the walkway itself? or? So that's a change also, but that's now a ramp with a railing. Yeah, that's something that, that our code consultant pointed out. It, it technically it is a ramp and requires uh, requires handrails up to the public right of way. And that's a bollard right there at the end? Uh, at the parking spot? No, uh, to the right. Here? Yeah, what is that? Uh, I think that's one of our internal uh, lights. Uh, uh, post light. Post, uh, like not, not a bollard. Uh, it's uh, all the way up. Okay. okay. One of, the, one of the things you can know here is originally both of the lights were on one side of the sign. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the changes here is now one light's on this side, one side's on, one light's on that side. That came about as we were out here looking at it, we're all graded out, you can actually see the sign coming down the street. So the thought was that uh, 
the lights ought to be spread out so you can view the sign from either direction. This is one of the, this it's, it's a symbolic, obviously, but this is one of the street lights that's uh, coming down the street here. It's locate, oh, it's not the sidewalk, is it? No, it's, it's kind of, it's, this is so blown up that the post actually is over here. Oh, I see, that's up and over. Yeah, you're kind yeah. of seeing the light, the lamp itself. Okay. okay. Um, so I could jump to the actual sign if you want to look at it, or, or get more questions about the... Yeah, the, the lights that are on the sign on either side now, the same exact lights that were in the plan. Yeah, the same specification on the lens. Yeah, the same. Okay. So this is the actual sign uh, before and after. This this came about basically just because uh, the Brightview sign standards change. Um, the net result is it has the same granite posts on either side of it, uh, but it's a little more translucent. It's a little more like a it's like a residential fence is what it's supposed to symbolize. The sign itself is actually substantially smaller than it was before. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a different style of fence. The, uh, the height of the post is the same. Uh, the sign itself is smaller. It's just got that little bit of residential, what's intended to look like a raw iron fence behind it. Is the railing on the sidewalk, does it also, it's just a railing, it has no picket, right? It's not a no, fence, it's, it's right. just a rail. It's purely a, uh, an ADA guardrail. Yeah. But then we have a railing on the street, or a fence, up, up a little up, higher up, from up this. Up on the wall, yes. Yep. The width of the, uh, of the side, I know, where the uh, uh, granite piers are, that's, that's a little shorter than what it was before, too, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah the, the, the sign itself is a little bit it's mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I think the sign itself is much more attractive with the, you know, the colored version that you gave us. I don't know if you have that there also. I do. To show everybody. I think the sign itself is much nicer. But the, the railing behind it is very distracting to me. Is that your standard, actually, now? Yeah, we just installed the first one at North Andover, and that, that's, yep. Okay. Yeah, I, it's I, a new standard. I have to say that it's, yeah. it's very distracting to me, and I would prefer just to see mm. it nice and clean, just the sign, mm. you know, even a little bigger than that if you wanted to, but mm. without all the railing work behind it. But, you know, maybe in, mm -hmm. in the reality of it, it looks really sharp, I don't know. On the, yeah. on the drawing, it looks a little distracting. But I think to our marketing folks, it looks really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it now that you have <laughs> one in the ground? Is it I think it looks good. Oh, the one at North Andover looks, looks fabulous. It looks fabulous. Really um, yeah. it's, that's not the purview of Adam or I. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a different. We're just delivering the message. <laughs> it, does, it does fall under our purview, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. or fortunately. Well, I hope you, you deem it acceptable. Um, we would like to keep uh, consistent. Uh, you like it? I don't like it. Actually, it's encouraging your 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 response yeah. to the sign itself because that's the sign is, is very what our folks attractive. have been after. Is yet yeah. when this more yeah. now matches the fonts that down below. Exactly. You know, as, yeah. As Jake is involved in that, uh, so let's continue that branding. It ties in nicely. Even the colors are nice. Yeah. We're very pleased the with that. The granite will be nice. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, maybe in reality, it will look better. Vines will grow up around. No, they won't. <laughs> the sign. Is the, that's a good question, though. Is the planting still there? I know mm -hmm. the area's gotten a little tighter, but the planting plan showed planting in front of the sign. Is it now on both sides of the sign, now that it's two sided? Yeah, Koch another. is aware of that, and she, yeah, she's redeveloping the landscaping so on both sides. So there will still be landscape mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good. Right. What color is the railing? Uh, black. Okay. Which is the same color, Carol, as the decorative fence that runs up along Sims Road. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so I think hopefully you've got the different yeah. things that we, we'd like to see. Um, we can, you know, if you can get that to us in the next week, I think the best thing might be to, um, it's March 31st is a pretty full night right now, but uh, I think we'll be able to um, uh, talk about this uh, at that point if we, uh, and then hopefully wrap this, this piece of it up. So, um, anything from the board? No. Nope. Okay. Appreciate your response. Okay. Us and nope. us on the agenda so we can handle this um, I will do one thing before you all leave. This is a this was a public hearing, so um, why don't we do this? I will take public comment uh, on the design changes that we're talking about here. Uh, if you have questions on anything else, then you should do that at another time as an agenda item or whatever else. But if folks uh, from the public do have comments on the design changes, uh, you know, please keep them short and uh, to the point, and uh, that's fine. We'll have some public well, comment. <coughs> the uh, bus that is being parked out underneath the <coughs> streetlight right next to the garage mm -hmm. entrance sticks out. Mm -hmm. uh, I oh, couldn't hear you, Laurel. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, please give your name and address. Uh, Laurel, I call again. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Brattle Street, um, one of the abutters. The bus that is parked out there exceeds the length of the spot it's supposed to be in, and it uh, really prevents cars going into the garage properly. The bigger problem is that <coughs> the light that's right underneath that reflects off the white van and it blows into our neighborhoods again. So from what I understand, I spoke to Rick about it this morning, <coughs> it was supposed to be moved. And when I came down tonight, it had been moved. Where in the plan <coughs> is it now going to be parked? Uh, so so the question is, there's a, a, as approved during the whole process, that was a, a a, uh, um, a parking spot for the bus. Yes. So that's that's what is as planned. Okay. So, so where is it going now? So the question is: is you're saying you're you're asking if um, that is going to be moved? I think is the number one. My question. understanding is that it has been moved. Is it moved permanently? Okay. If so, where is it going mm -hmm. to be parked now? Clearly, it does not fit into the garage. It's too tall. So where right. in the courtyard is it going to be parked? Yeah. Do you so, have any sense for where it's happening with the bus? So right now, our intention really is to keep it in its current location. We have moved it right now. I know you did. Um, be because of your concerns. Um, we have landscaping planned in that area. It's just not the season to have, and we're not fully completed on our landscaping yet. But the idea is acknowledging that you're saying there's some glare coming off of that street light. Uh, hitting the van is something, you know, we probably did not anticipate. So we do already have some landscaping there, but we'll revisit the amount of landscaping and what we can do to try and reduce the glare. It really is the right location for that, uh, for that van, for the main reasons that we want to keep uh, as many available parking spaces at the surface level uh, near the entry as we can. Um, but we can so, so if you have someone driving into the garage mm -hmm. or coming out and they're not really paying attention and they can, can't really quite gauge, I'm looking at the population that you have in your facility, they can't quite gauge either side, your truck is going to get creamed. Yeah, the bus. I, the bus. Yeah, and, and what we're getting into here is is a little bit beyond the scope I, of I what we're talking but, about. But it so, is, a, so but I it think is an issue. It, it, that's fine, but not an issue for this evening. Okay. Anything else for the public? Um, since an outdoor name and address, please. Beth Ann Friedman, Hazel Terrace. Um, since an outdoor fireplace, from my understanding, um, isn't permitted in Arlington. Um, once again, is we'll, we'll ask the. I'm assuming that they're going to have all of their fire inspections, et cetera. And trust me, I'm sure Chief Jefferson will make sure that everything is within code. Barbecues are allowed, so it's, it's a, a fire pit may not be allowed. But once again, this yeah. isn't the purview of this okay. board. Okay. So uh, if, if there's a concern, then I'm sure the the fire chief will um, 
take it up. So. Uh, anyone? Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Just, um, I would just like to clarify something. Yeah, please. Uh, I want to um, clarify when Mike said this was a hearing. I think you meant. No, no, I, I apologize. Been, this had been a hearing. Yeah, a I'm hearing. sorry. This it, had it been. This was not a hearing. This is not a hearing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And my apologies I, I'm if I mis misspoke. No, no, no. I, I tried to make that abundantly clear at the beginning. So, uh, But you're right. I probably misspoke. So thank you, Carol. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to move. Uh, thanks. Now we're going to move on to uh, the next portion. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you, Claire. I can ask these fine gentlemen and ladies to help me. Oh, okay. Thanks, David. You're Appreciate that. We'll give maybe one minute for a sip of water. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Where's the other line? I'm going to get some stones. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Start back up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to the corner after getting a glass of water here. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, to for recommendations on the uh, zoning bylaw amendment and warrant articles. So um, we had our public hearing uh, on March 3rd uh, regarding the, war the zoning warrant articles that were brought before us. Um, there were four, and what you have in front of you right now is a um, draft uh, report for the um, Arlington uh, from the Arlington Redevelopment Board to town meeting with respect to those four articles. Um, so within this, there are a couple placeholders uh, for the report, um, and you know what I'd like to do tonight is have uh, take a vote on each of the articles, um, as well as kind of talk about the report a little bit and what we want to say about it. And then I think what we would do is um, we'd have we would we will have then voted, but the one thing I think we'll have time to do is we'll do a more uh, complete report uh, for town meeting based on those votes, and provide them to the board, and we could maybe have a vote on. Do we vote on the report itself? How do we usually report? No, usually on? you vote. Um, my recollection is yeah. past years you. Um, decide on your recommended vote, yeah. and then that gets worked into a report, a report. That, that finalizes the report, and then that goes okay. to the board selectman for the selectman's office. To for for distribution to town meeting members. That's right. Um, so maybe what we can do with that report once we get it done is get it out to board members, and you can collect any any uh, administrative comments that they might have to it, or something like that. And if there's more than administrative comments, I think we'll have enough time to get it on an agenda for. At the next meeting. Yeah. So, um, if, if there's concern about what the report end, ends up saying, other than just administrative matters. Mm -hmm. So, does that sound like a plan then? Very good. Okay. Um, so, the first article that we went through was on the uh, zoning of uh, registered marijuana dispensaries. Um, and as you might recall, we had uh, a bit of conversation at the and heard um, uh, a few comments on the siting of those dispensaries from the um, inter, inter uh, what would you call that, that uh, group that, the group that had advanced the notion of um, siting these in B3 and B5. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what you've got in front of you. Um, so, we, Comments or anything else on those, or any other questions? Bruce? Um, my reaction to this is I think the warrant article as written is actually pretty straightforward. We're uh, following the definition of medical marijuana treatment center uh, from the state statute, uh, practically verbatim. Um, we've talked about what the right districts are and thought that B5 would be too restrictive because there's so few of those districts and they're all clustered in the center. Uh, 
Um, so the B3 district uh, would uh, open up siting to East Arlington and the Heights and also have a few more districts uh, potentially available. Uh, and uh, making this a special permit matter uh, subject to EDR, which is sort of the third leg of the article, uh, seems to make sense and it reflects um, the input that uh, the working group uh, composed of the chair and uh, the Department of Public Health, uh, the uh, uh, chief of police, uh, planning director, and, and others have, have weighed in. So I, I, I think it's uh, good as written. Okay, thank you. I agree. I think we had a nice discussion last time about the the buffer zones mm -hmm. and you know to keep them away from child focused uses and I think Carol explained that very well at the at the hearing we had as to why it doesn't make sense to map that out mm -hmm. right now and that the B three and the B five right now it, they're good locations based on what's happening today mm -hmm. and you've mapped out all the schools so we know that we're in outside of that 500 foot buffer zone. Right, from all the B3 and the B5, so. Yeah, and if it were, and if a B3 did uh, come closer, then that would be automatically knocked out of the locks at that time. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah, so I think, I agree with Bruce that everything's written very straightforward and captures what we needed to. Mm -hmm. I agree with both Bruce and, and Christine. I think it's very well written. Great. Andy, good. You're good? Yep. Carol, any other comments before we... No, only I will offer to um, put together, the department can put together any type of maps that the board thinks you'll need to present this at the town meeting. Yeah, so that's a great idea. A single layer showing, a single map showing where B3 and B5 are. We'll put the schools, the public schools on it. Yes. Um, I'm also thinking about trying to take some of the feedback you heard from the public and trying to address that through maps if possible or um, give you some talking points, yeah. or offer you some talking points because one of you will most likely be presenting this. And, and what might be helpful, and I think we can talk about it when we get closer to giving up presenters and all that kind of good stuff, is what we might want to do is even set up a series of slides with different overlays. You know, here's B5 and B3, and if people start to say, well, what about, you know, other ones? You can kind of start maybe layering on top of that okay. what the other districts would do with kind of like a, if, if you keep to the next slide, it would show B4, or it would yeah. show, you know, B, B1 and all the little houses, and every, you know, the, the commercial, uh, professional, you know, uh, places and houses and that stuff. I don't know, but once again, I think if we did that as we get closer to presenting, then I think that might be uh, helpful. Yeah. One point that we might want to bear in mind in, in making the presentation, and it came from the public comment period uh, previous meeting, uh, was the question of whether one can apply for a location without being uh, having right. a permit to operate. And the way that this warrant article if it were to become part of a bylaw would change the table of use regulations with that article um, item 7.10 um, is that in order to apply for the special permit you have to have been permitted to that's operate yeah. by the Port Arlington Board of Health. Yeah, I like so. that. Yep. That's and that's already in the, the language. It is. Right? It is. Okay. As such by Arlington Board of Health. Yep. Okay. But I think that's something that's worthy of no, that is, that is, yeah. that's, that's real nice. It might also be helpful as an overlay to have kind of what, for those people that don't know what the EDR process is, to have a summary of what we go through on the EDR mm -hmm. process. Yeah. Just a bulleted, yeah, at least have, have a slide ready. with that so that they know that yeah. we're going to be looking at this that's as right. we do all yeah, of our okay. special yeah. permits. Yeah, in that, you know what, that's a... That would be a good one to have probably for questions. I, I'll be interested to see, you know, I definitely want to uh, speak with the uh, uh, town manager as well as um, uh, Christine Majora on, on this as well as far as kind of giving up time and who's best to speak to a few of these mm -hmm. things. So yeah, yeah. I, think w I think we want to make sure that when we present that we have a, uh, the ability to kind of go from one 
route to another fairly fairly seamlessly, you know, mm -hmm. to try to make sure we get people's questions answered uh, by the re by the right people. Would it make sense to also in the presentation overview any state prerequisites before you even got to the town level? Yeah, you're time. right. Kind of kind of layer it down. Yeah. Come, like start broad and move. Came up like and the last yeah, thing about how that would work. Yeah. Yeah. Start broad and, and move to local. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. And that speaks to um, Bruce, what Bruce brought up too about whether you can apply before you get. Yes. There. Right. Um, yes. That fills that out a little more. Yeah. And you're going to mention the group that analyzed it and worked on it the way you did before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about the group. It was to group. show that the police chief and the various of the people, yeah, department, department attorney, department services. of health, yeah. all, all, and uh, yeah, the all the enforcement officer, things. yeah, the town manager, uh, town yeah, manager. planning director, yeah. Um, and that must have been a working group. It was, yeah. 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 So it wasn't a public meeting. No, it was, it was a working, working group. group meeting. Okay. Then I think if, you know, we've got some work to do on presentation and a little bit to do on the report itself, uh, but, you know, maybe I'd entertain a motion to um, approve the uh, uh, recommended uh, vote as written. So moved. Okay. Second. Second by Andy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, that brings us to uh, article number seven, which is the um, <clears throat> the affordable units uh, designated uh, as a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'll just read it. To see if the town will vote to or take any action related thereto to amend section 11.08D of the zoning bylaws to increase the required percentage of residential units designated as affordable units within any new pro uh, project. This was uh, Mr. Belskis's um, a Warren article. Uh, as you might recall, Mr. Belskis uh, presented. He did not have any language for us um, as he wasn't sure what he wanted to either increase it, whether he wanted to increase it at all, or um, you know whether he just wanted to keep it uh, rather nebulous. Um, and right now, as you might recall, it's it's 15%. So um, you might also recall that uh, um, Laura and uh, Carol informed us that um, you know, they did do a survey of surrounding towns and everyone was uh, right around the 10 to 15 uh, percent um, threshold uh, on this. So uh, with that as background, um, you know, I'll maybe go around again. Yeah, my reaction to this is that um, since the warrant doesn't suggest what it should be increased to, uh, I find it um, vague and uh, would not be of very much guidance to developers or to the board. And uh, I'm also concerned that increasing um, the, per the required percentage uh, would make, uh, you, you, we take a step closer to a 40B proposal instead of choosing the traditional zoning route. So my recommendation would be a vote of no action. Okay. Christine? I would agree with that okay. for all the same reasons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would agree for the exact same reasons. Andy? Yeah, I completely agree. I, don't, I didn't hear a compelling reason to change it. And I feel more doubts about changing it than I do positive reactions to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to delve into why he wanted to increase it relative to his concerns about 40B projects, and I didn't really understand pluses and minuses clearly enough. So I would strongly recommend that this is a no action until we know much better how to, how to proceed, if at all, on this kind of thing. Uh, but we also don't want to discourage development beyond uh, a certain level of we want to make the right mix, and we're at 15% right now, which is at the high end of many municipalities. So. I think that's right. I, I think the one thing I would add, too, is, is as we've talked about during this whole master planning process, there are some things that just have the feeling that they should be part of the discussion during the master plan, um, you know, and this obviously belongs in that discussion. 
Um, and I think, you know, when we started the master plan, we, we talked about trying to beware of zoning articles that really should almost be part of that discussion. And I think that this one clearly fits in that scope as well, along with everything that everyone else has said as well. I, I would also um, recommend an interaction with this one. So, um, Carol, anything? Okay. Um, so, with that in mind, I'll entertain a motion uh, for no action on Article 7. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, Article 8, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different here. Um, I don't think that, you, if you've been to town meeting long enough, <laughs> you'll realize that sometimes um, there is a, a kind of um, um, uh, push and pull between the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen on certain articles that have a little bit of both. Um, there's a, a finance piece to it and the other. And oftentimes what you see in there is it says, you know, the finance committee will report on this article or the, um, the selectmen will, um, uh, will report on this article. I don't think that a no action vote is, is something that we want to entertain in this regard because we're not really speaking to, this is the dark skies article uh, that was not presented to us and that in fact has been now presented to the Board of Selectmen because in the end, this is the one that they're looking to amend a current regular bylaw, not a zoning bylaw. So it was kind of put in our basket of articles and it shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. So I think what I would entertain here is a recommendation that we put in there that, and I don't even know if we need to take this vote, but let's take it anyway. I'd entertain a vote th to simply say within the report, this will be reported out by the Board of Selectmen. Sounds we, good. Not this will be, or we record, no, just no, this will it, be. No, this will be, okay. because it will be, right. So, and it's not in our purview. So I don't think we have to go into too much of that. I, I might put a couple sentences in the report mm -hmm. um, talking about kind of a little bit of the history, but in the end, I don't think we should take an actual vote okay. on this one, because it's going to be in the Board of Selectmen. Or the, it's the Board's so. understanding that this will be reported. It yes. Is, it is our understanding that... You know, yes, yes, exactly, family. exactly. It is our understanding that this will be reported out by the Board of Selectmen. Um, so does someone want to... Like I, I said, I'm not sure i got to move this one, but let's try it anyway. Let's do it anyway. Um, I move that the um, Board not vote <laughs> on Article <laughs> 82. That is going to see and instead simply note that this will be reported out by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Sorry to make you do that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I was actually expecting you. I was actually expecting you just to say, yeah. I mean, yeah, I whatever. I moved that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I moved that, and then I was going to work on it with Carol. Um, I've ever phrased a vote that we not vote. Yeah, that vote that, that we not vote. We'll, we'll that. work on it. <laughs> like I said, I don't think we had to do that. So I think okay. we can simply say that this will be reported out by the board of selectmen because it's not in our. I talked to the town moderator. He wasn't going to listen to us anyway on it, so it didn't matter. <laughs> um, okay, Article Nine is uh, with respect to, and this one we should vote, this was with respect to outdoor seating uh, for restaurants. Mm -hmm. And it specifically wants a new section 11.10 added to the zoning bylaw. So we should report out on this one. Um, this is, as you might recall, we've um, been informed by, general, uh, by the uh, town council that, um, uh, that use of uh, public spaces, uh, or public ways, I should say, uh, is in the purview of the Board of Selectmen and not in ours. So that this is not uh, the correct uh, place for this particular, uh, adding this article to the zoning bylaw is not the correct thing to do. I can read the, uh, the email again. I do have it, um, but essentially, um, Are you reading this even? The grade area has to be the same. Yeah, hello. Yep. <laughs> uh, sorry, thank you. I'll just read that. The board has been informed by council that the temporary private occupancy of public ways is under the authority and jurisdiction of the selectmen and is therefore not a matter for zoning. 
It is important to note that this article appears to duplicate an application and review process for outdoor seating already in use by the Board of Selectmen. In addition, the current regulations provide for the same or greater clear space for pedestrian passage uh, as the proposed uh, bylaw amendment. And the current regulations require the applicant to place a bond or insurance certificate to safeguard the town. So, actually, so I'll go around with, so that's the, the report out that actually Carol and I worked on this week. Mm -hmm. um, comments? I don't have anything to add to that. Okay. I don't understand why we're not not voting on this one like we No, we are. We are voting on But oh. why are we not not Because, <laughs> because it specifically <laughs> wants us to change the zoning bylaw. The other one didn't ask us to change the zoning bylaw. If you look at the, it well, you no, know, it said it said um, amending a current bylaw. To amend the, the town and zoning. Right, and I asked the council about that, and yeah. I was not concerned about the conjunctive. So that the town is the the fact that the town is going to change the town bylaw. So that's a town bylaw. This is a zoning bylaw. Exactly, I'm talking about. it's specifically a zoning bylaw. Okay, I see. So no, I appreciate it. So that's the difference okay. is because he has specifically recommended a new section 11.10 mm -hmm. to the zoning bylaw. Okay. All right, I understand it now. That's the only question I had. It looks, it, yeah, it looks fine. Okay. Andrew? I, I don't see any need to, to change what already exists. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Then um, I'll entertain a motion for no action. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thanks. So, so that's probably that was probably the trickiest of the reports. So everyone's heard that one. So mm -hmm. hopefully everyone's okay with that wording. That's probably the trickiest of of the different uh, of the four. Um, yes. Okay. So I think we're done with that. And moving on the agenda. So will each one of these need to be presented at town meeting? No, like, well, no the actions ARB? are not presented. Okay. Yeah. No actions. So no. we so really only, only have one. one. We only have one. Present. The moderator analysis. Okay. We, we only have one. If someone puts in a substitute for one of these three, we may be asked for our opinion, but we would not present it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the master plan update. That we're actually on time. Wow. Uh, yeah. We are still in the working paper phase of the master plan. Uh, the working papers present the um, issues that have arisen and the kind of the questions that the community has to wrestle with uh, in each of the plan areas. Uh, land use and public services and facilities was um, were both presented. Those papers are still on the website. We have housing uh, to be presented April 3rd. No, excuse me, economic development right. will be okay. April 3rd, and um, transportation will follow. Housing was presented on March 6th, and comments are still being accepted on the housing working paper. Um, some of the discussion questions are, are compelling, I think. I, I encourage the board to take a glance at least at the discussion questions. And of course, to make comment on any of the pa working papers, each working paper is um, presented. Um, it's posted to the website, and a very brief survey monkey is then made available that includes some of the discussion questions to try to get additional input from the public. So you don't have have to um, only show up to the um, working paper presentation to comment. Um, Historic and cultural resource areas, natural resources, open space, and recreation working papers will follow in, in May. Um, I think we may end up going into June a little bit. At the next meeting, the consultant and the committee will be talking about the, what they then do over the summer because the committee will then need to do a lot of decision making about what kind of recommendations to include. The report, the plan, will then be presented to the board about a year from now for approval, to adopt the plan. Uh, and then it would go to town meeting for endorsement. So I think that the part 
you know, we've been in this intense period of activity with these working papers, and now we're, we really want to develop um, a schedule of activity for what's the expectation over the summer. I think the committee wants to know, and we want to be able to, to tell the public how to engage with the, with the plan decision making over the summer. So that will be discussed at the next meeting. The working papers are going to go throughout the year, though, right? We still have a few more after. It's yeah. not going to end in June, is it? Well, I think, we that, get I think they will be through. I think we, we should be through by then. Okay. Yeah. But then, of course, recommendations. There is a um, visual preference survey that is still in the contract. Um, that will... Visual preference survey, the one I've observed is... It, basically shows different types of building massing and detailing in context um, in a district and gauges what the community, what the public most responds to or feels is most harmonious with um, other buildings in the district. Um, and we also have a, we have a, we received a grant to um, look at whether we could improve incentives for uh, links to uh, promote health, healthy communities, um, by linking to the Millbrook. So this is another way to kind of try to create some incentives for um, trying to realize some of the concepts you heard Andy describe at the December 17th meeting. Um, that will be worked into several elements of the master plan. And we also expect to get some zoning recommendations from the mass plan consultants. Who was the grant from? The grant was from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. MIPC. Yeah. And it's for linking healthy. It's for trying to, in, in, um, trying to increase healthy communities through zoning. So we're going to try to look at what what kind of mm. um, changes we can make to the to the zoning to promote linkages to the Millbrook. Because that's that's where we're you know the thrust of where we're trying to um, realize some opportunities with the Millbrook, um, which kind of cuts across all of the master plan elements. Um, we put the application in I think it's in the fall, so we uh, we started looking at the map. The, the, there were um, some good maps created after the Millbrook Task Force developed the concept. And so we're looking at where are the parcels that are, um, where are the open channel parcels? Do they abut town property? Um, to try to see where the low hanging fruit would be, where are the greatest opportunities for connecting the bike path in the Millbrook? So it's exciting, I think. Mm. It's, and it makes sense to be doing it right now in the context of the yeah. master plan. We're trying to leverage other resources to expand the planning we do through the master plan. For example, the um, the uh, economic impact of the theater study to try to understand more about the, the the spending that those two uses in those two commercial districts create for our local economy. So that that will also contribute a lot to the economic development element of the master plan. I thought that study was very valuable. Oh, glad to hear that. Yeah. Good. On on that point, um, I've offered to the. Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee to talk a little bit about what the department does in economic development and what local economic development is uh, and what we've been doing uh, in the last year and how, how ATED and the department uh, interact and, and mm -hmm. opportunities for the future. They're going through an interesting kind of visioning exercise for their committee. So it seemed like an opportune time to talk about what the um, core activities of local economic development are from a um, planning department perspective, so we can discuss how ATED and the planning department fit together. That sounds good. Yeah, are you, um, how has participation been as you've gone along? Has it been pretty steady? Is there, uh, you know, public participation? Uh, any signs of fatigue a little bit or uh you know I, I feel a little handicapped in answering that because I was not at the last presentation okay um, I was away um, I heard it was fairly well attended I, I think it was slightly less than the last okay. one um, you know it, it's it's tricky it's challenging yeah um, we are trying to reach out to all age groups all, all um, neighborhoods 
Um, I wish there were other ways besides having to show up on a weeknight when you really want to be home with your family. Um, th and there are ways, um, but we don't yet have them in Arlington. I hope someday we have um, some platforms like um, I, there's a, a web-based application called Open Town Hall. I think I've mentioned it before. Yeah. It's um, another competitor. It's called Mind Mixer. It gives you a little opportunity to look at a, little, a video on a website and then comment. So they, um, Open Town Hall can actually record what precinct you're commenting from. Okay. Um, they can archive the comments and sort them and do some um, anal analysis of the comments. So that looks like it has some real promise. We don't have that yet, but it would be great to just add another um, facet to our public engagement. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on in Arlington that, that competes with people's attention. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's been pretty good. There does seem to be a. Um, a group who continues to come to the events. I think I also see some new faces that I hadn't seen before who seem to um, now be really engaged because of the master plan. So it, I do take heart in That's that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about the public comment and the survey and write-in comments on the working papers? Are we getting a lot? We are. We, we are trying with each plan element. We try to reach out to um, boards, committees, and commissions, yeah. organizations, individuals who are known to be interested in that subject. Um, not that we only want the usual suspects, but um, it's just one way to ensure we don't overlook the people who are most dedicated to those topics. Mm. We've been doing a town notice on each, uh, when each working paper is out and on the date when the presentation will be made. We're posting the, um, we're posting as much information as, um, as we can in addition to the presentations. And Arlington Community Media now has some of the presentations available on demand on the website. So you can watch. Um, Mike Byrne and I also, the Director of Inspectional Services, and I did a 10 Things You Need to Know About Zoning. And Bruce it was very came, good. Yeah, it was very came. good. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot. <laughs> really? Oh, that's good to hear. I did, yeah. It was very interesting. Good. Mike, Mike did a great job. Um, we put a lot into it, and it's something I think we should try to do from time to time. It's a great idea. Um, there were a lot of people in the room. Yeah, it was very well, well attended. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I mentioned at a recent meeting that a town meeting member pulled me aside at a break a few years ago after one of the town, uh, one of the zoning bylaw amendment warrant articles tanked, <laughs> and she said, you know, I really hated voting against that, but I don't feel like I know enough about zoning. Would you someday do a, a workshop? So this was a, a res in response to that, um, and there was a lot of interest from town meeting members, um, several of whom who couldn't attend asked if it was going to be available. So the slides are up on the website, and the um, presentation itself was recorded, as I said, by ACMI, so that's up on the website, as well as the other presentations. So. Anyone who feels like, oh, I've missed so much, you can get caught up a lot if you if you want to have that on your laptop while you're cooking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of NPR or something. Your bedtime reading. <laughs> so I think that covers a lot of, um, brings you up to date a bit. Christine, would you add anything? Did I overlook anything that you think is... I, I was going to add the video, but you just mentioned that, that they were online. How does... Um... Does the master plan, I guess it doesn't dovetail, that's definitely wrong word, but what about the Community Preservation Act? What if, what if mm. we had talked about that for well, the board to... I think any master plan that's been done by almost any community in Massachusetts in the last five years has probably had a recommendation that the municipality consider CPA uh, as a funding means to implement a lot of the recommendations. But the did we, that's a little bit of the cart before the horse right now because we're still it working is, on the working um, papers. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything that comes out of a master plan requires a budget, but a lot of it does. Yeah. And the Community Preservation Act was created because there are certain categories that 
always are put off because there are um, higher priorities for funding. Um, historic preservation, affordable housing, and open space and recreation. Those are the categories that are the benefit from the Community Preservation Act funds. Okay. So, in fact, that's um, a kind of a segue. Uh, right. The Redevelopment Board is not required to comment on Community Preservation Act warrant article, but I would not be surprised if you are asked what is, does, does the board have a position? So you may want to consider whether you will take a position and, um, if asked. Yeah, is, yeah. Because you, mm. if you're asked at town meeting and you're kind of caught off guard, it, it could be a missed opportunity. But if you feel that it's not, I just want you to, to know that you might be asked. So, so that Warren article goes before the Board of Selectmen, or it has actually. And that will be reported out from them um, what the agenda is for March 31st. But just knowing what we've already got stacked up for that, I think it would be difficult to, to kind of have that discussion on the 31st. So, so that would be my only concern there. Did ACMI video that one also, the presentation by, yeah, on the Arlington that. Land Trust annual meeting? Yeah. Oh, probably not. I don't think. Since it was a land trust meeting. I'm looking at Julie, but she's busy working <laughs> at her. <yeah. laughs> um, I, I was there, and I... I, I, I don't remember recall. seeing anybody, mm -hmm. but they might have been there. Yeah, they're so quiet in the background. <laughs> don't even know they're there. Yeah, we could find out, because we could all watch that. Yeah, those yeah that, that, might there, be, that would be helpful. If and those at work could watch it to remind themselves <laughs> yeah. of everything that was said and help us have a discussion about yeah, it. That's good. Yeah. But I think maybe what we'll try to do is, is uh, which actually, before we get to minutes, just about meetings. So the next meeting uh, is scheduled for the 31st, uh, 3.31. Then we have a few hiccups uh, that we should probably uh, talk about. Um, yeah. This is a tough one because the, yeah. April has um, Passover. It is April 14th. The first night of Passover is April 14th. Uh, I, I think generally it's probably better if we can avoid meeting that night, depending on what's on your agenda and who. Um, and let me see. The, the following week is April 19th. It's the uh, Patriots Day and the beginning of school vacation week. Right. Um, April. Seventh is one week after your next meeting. Yeah, it might be that you. It might be that we want to put a placeholder in for April seventh, I guess, um, because then April twenty eighth we will definitely have a meeting. Um, that is the first night of town meeting, and Andrew, what we will typically do is um, we'll meet for an hour from seven to eight. Mm -hmm. We'll actually stay in. Um, we stay in session, or do we just recess and go down there? The way that the the new open meeting laws work is we almost have to stay in session when we go down to town meeting. So if we need to act as a board, we can do so while we're down there. Okay. Um, and uh, so we'll go down there at eight. Um, if they probably have the state of the town address, mm -hmm. and and they'll go through the first articles. Zoning is always after they get through the kind of more. Um, ceremonial um, uh, warrant articles, zoning's right off the bat. Um, so the first one up will be the medical marijuana uh, <laughs> treatment centers. Were we going to change that uh, Yeah, well, we uh, I didn't get it through this. Year. I didn't get it through this year. So <laughs> so no, same old, same old this year. Um, so so we'll present early. And what that, the good news in all of that is, <laughs> for those members who are not uh, members of town meeting, um, it, it means that it's an early exit from town meeting, usually. Um, Carol, any, I don't have the warrant, so I wonder, any idea when the, um, when the Community Preservation Act? That's the only one that we might want to consider trying to figure out when that's going to be, um, and have the board go to that. So, so in essence, I, we may or may not get through that warrant article on the first night, but there is a possibility because it is Article Six that we could possibly get through um, that warrant article and then seven, eight, nine. And if there's no controversy around the different actions we've taken tonight, um, it, there's a possibility that even in the first night we could we could be done with the zoning articles. Um, if not, I would definitely expect that we'd be done by the second night. So, 
which is the Wednesday after the Monday. Um, so, uh, so, so I think we should schedule the seventh for now. Okay. And see what comes up. See what we can handle on the thirty-first. See if there's any overflow. Because uh, right now the thirty-first is kind of jam-packed. I think. Mm. So we may want to have that as our overflow anyway. And mm -hmm. if the things that I can move off a week, sure. I might do just that. that so that way sense. we won't make the thirty-first an absolute marathon. Um, so and then and then we'd skip on the fourteenth and the twenty-first, and we'd be back in session on the twenty-eighth for the first night of town meeting. Mm -hmm. So. Does that sound like a plan for everybody? Okay, sounds good. All right. Are we presenting anything on the master plan at this town meeting? Well, that's a good question. As far as like just a summary of what's been happening well, or an update? You know what's an interesting? Idea? So, so at at the beginning of every um, at the beginning of every uh, town meeting uh, session, mm -hmm. uh, there is reports and uh, um, announcements and and that type of thing. Um, so. The Master Plan Advisory Committee could actually do a report, yeah. which might make Can more sense. Can we talk sense, about that at one of the meetings once? Yeah. Which might make more sense than mm -hmm. us doing the report and then having to kind of yeah. seed the time over, right? Um, so you may want to talk about that with Judy. And, and with and the with chair. A, with the chair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what... That, that, yeah, that, that's an important opportunity for town meeting members yeah. and for the committee. Mm -hmm. But the good news there is, is it doesn't have to be that for You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be right at the beginning with all the zoning articles or anything else. You can do, what I meant by that was, is you can do it at any of the sessions at the beginning of the oh, session. Oh, the right. announcements the at each one. For announcements and reports. Yeah. Because the moderator always calls for reports. Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, if the person isn't a member of a town meeting, although, yeah, I need to think about that. Um, have to or ask the moderator. They'd have to be introduced uh, by somebody, but um, mm -hmm. but that's but that's easy enough. They have to do. be introduced by a town meeting member. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I could do it. So. Okay. Well, actually, I may not be able to. I'm up for re-election, so there you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. <laughs> this is about campaign. Well, not for me. I mean, only because, like, you know, if I make it, I make it. If not, it's okay. <laughs> the people have spoken. <laughs> so, All your supporters will be tough for them if you don't. Yeah, it would they, yeah. they, be a crushing blow. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so, not being cavalier about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, anyway, that's that's the thought process on that. I think I think a report by the uh, Master Plan Advisor Committee would be great. Yeah. Yeah, just a, you know, one sheet process or something. Yeah, I think town meeting members deserve to hear that. Yeah. I think Quite a few like of them that. are town meeting members, too, on the committee, aren't they? Yeah, there are a good, uh, good number. Actually, nice it would be a nice. Actually, yeah, and it would be nice maybe for one of those members to get up and and, and do it. Exactly. So that, yeah, they could idea. introduce and yeah. introduce the whole committee, yeah. call out all the town meeting members, that especially that are there. Good. That would be very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to describe the process, so that when it comes up before them, because it's going to come before them next year, right? Yeah, that's right. So Enforcement. this is kind of the prelude. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good opportunity. Great. I think the last item on our agenda is minutes uh, from the March 3rd hearing. I thought they were perfect. <laughs> Amy Fidelgo. I think we should just leave it at that. <laughs> Make a motion to approve it. <laughs> Did she write them? Um, they, she wrote them? Did she? They were very good. Um, my, I did have a couple of comments on the second page, um, when it says the, what's this about the fourth paragraph, the board then turned to Article 8 on outdoor lighting, mm -hmm. and I think that we may want to add something like this article was submitted both as a zoning article and as a general bylaw article. Um, and the chair noted that the subject of outdoor lighting like noise would be more appropriately addressed by the general bylaw as opposed to the zoning bylaw, which was also the opinion shared by the town moderator and town council. Accordingly, the board did not discuss the merits of this warrant article. Because I don't think we really nope. did talk about it. I think you're right. Um, so, and then, I mean, we can still add in that, you know, Christian Klein you know, made his observation. Um, 
But that was really my only thought on that one. That's great that you happened to write that out. <laughs> I did write that out. I'm going to pass it over to Carol Thank you. so she can. Amy will that's appreciate that's a good that. Point. <laughs> Amy, she did a good job for the first one. So. I know. Thanks, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Christine, anything? No, that was actually it. Andrew. But it was perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the little The second page, where Mr. Fitzsimmons moved to close the public portion of the hearing, that whole paragraph is a little clumsy because of the events that happened there, where it was closed. Yeah. Then we moved to the minutes. Then we can't come back and reopen the public comments. And I would understand why Amy didn't get it. Because, yeah, yeah I it, might it just was, break it was paragraph. Very confusing. Yeah. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Mm. And then the last line should say, Ms. Sapinski moved to Mr. Bennell's second oh, no. public comment period. Mm -hmm. And all voted in favor. Mm -hmm. Where's that last one? Uh, Ms. Sapinski moved. Thank you. I think you need just at the end of that sentence, and all voted in favor. Thank you. Andy, anything? No. Sir. I think right underneath that, Carol, you maybe we usually put the vote to adjourn in there, I think, do we? Or do we not do that all the time? I think we usually do. Yeah, so whatever the usual language is there, on, I don't think we went too great, uh, too angry. Um, the only other things I had were on the first page. Sorry, just one more. That's okay. Please. Thank you. Um, so the first thing I had, where we say that um, the chairman opened the meeting, do we want to say the chairman opened the public hearing? We don't really have anywhere in here that this was a public hearing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, just one of my, my own things, uh, is... Uh, one, two, three, where it says the board discussed the difficulty of separating the cultivation dispensing locations. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like the board's been I know. trying it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, it, yeah. It, just town council is uh, C O U N S E L. Um, and then the only other thing I had was that the, on the first sentence of the long paragraph on that page, mm -hmm. um, uh, third line, well, uh, and then the or second line is and then the medical marijuana treatment center uh, would have to get a special permit from the town through environmental design review if this zoning article passed. Okay. You want to say apply for instead of get? What's that? <clears throat> and then the medical marijuana treatment center would have to apply for a special yeah, permit. Yeah, yeah, would have to the town uh, rather apply than get for a special yeah. permit. And that's, that's all I had on this. So I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was Andrew on the and he on the second. Anything else on the board? All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Look at that. <laughs>